Hey Space Cowboys, it's Seasonal Frostbite and welcome back, I'm back, and this week we voted on what you guys wanted to see and basically y'all say y'all wanted to see whatever. Okay, I just did this the runner up, so we're doing the doll makers diary this week. That's what we're doing. Uh, so let's talk about my doll brand, it's a craft supply endless doll as of today the very first prototype is being finished um there's a couple of things i got to do but it's pretty much finished and at first i wanted to 3d model and um you know 3d print 3d print all that stuff but look i'm in my i'm in my glasses today so like i decided to serve you dark academia because I'm stuck in my glasses, but like, look, look. They make my eyes so small because that is how blind I am. So bear with me, okay? All right. I wanted to do 3D modeling. I actually went ahead and bought myself a 3D printer back like maybe four or six years ago. And I just, listen, I try learning 3D modeling. I get the modeling portion, but for what I want to do, not ball jointed dolls, jointed dolls um i look i couldn't figure out even though i couldn't figure out the information to do that there were a bunch of classes i could take but it was easier for me to just sculpt it by hand because i do have that skill set so i'm gonna use that skill set but also doing things by hand is still it's still very valid and effective for industrial design and engineering it is it is, it is. so that's what I'm doing. I'm doing things by hand. And my plan after the prototype to be done is to go ahead and start casting and start working on the other models. As I said before, I can't share my designs, but I can talk about Endless Dolls and my plans for it. I plan for this doll line to be a craft supply, like I said earlier, for doll making. I envision Endless Dolls to be available in art stores like Blick or Jerry's Artorama. But that's, you know, that is further down the line. We ain't got capital yet, okay? We gotta, we gotta get through this stage first, okay? And that's one way we'll be building capital is doing our separate line, which is Endless Doll Houses. Like I said, they're sister, they're sister lines. Endless Doll Houses will provide for a lot of the capital that Endless Dolls will need. <laughs> Thank God. This doll line is made with the doll customizer and aspiring doll artist in mind like if you want to make a doll you you can do it easily with endless <laughs> each part of the bodies that i will be making is interchangeable between genders heights body types and even some fantasy species for example por ejemplo uh <laughs> if you wanted to, to, if you wanted a doll with like muscular arms, but you wanted like, if you wanted her to have like a little poo poo, a little pooch, a little, a little pooch, you'd be able to do that very, very easily. And all that jazz, because you'll be able to just switch out the torsos or switch out certain parts. And yeah, so yeah, that's, that's the plan. So prototype one is only one body type and then there's a plan for at oh god almost like 15 different bodies to start with now I also wanted you know to give customers a choice uh, between buying a full-size doll body you know just a, a full body or parts one of the companies that I really really admired was Obitsu and I loved how they offer parts for sale parts for sale as well as full body dolls and I will basically be following that model because I just think it's really cool then sometimes if you've already bought a, a already bought a full body but you need like certain parts or what if you just want to build an entire body but you wanted to just pick which parts you that came with the doll for a full-size body and I thought that would be really really cool one of the things that I'm adamant about about my line is 
how this will be made for the masses and I will not be taking my designs overseas to be mass produced. I will not. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want more control over my quality and I also just like bruh. I don't want to use cheap materials to make my doll bodies. Um, I don't want to use cheap materials at all to make my dolls. And in order to combat that, we are going to be casting in-house in the United States. I know. I know. It sounds crazy. But that's what I want. And that's what I see for my company. And as I get bigger, I, like, I would hope... I would hope, and I don't even want to be giant, boo-boo. I don't want to be giant. I just want to be sustainable, if that makes sense. As far as materials, I've been studying materials for six years, but it's 2021, so technically it's been seven years now that we've been in production, that I've been making it, that I've been making my, I've been speaking into existence, that I've been planning to just release some greatness into the world. I've chosen a high quality resin that will make the doll feel like, you know how A-Zone just kind of feels good in your hands with a little bit of weight that feels like A-Zone, but also like that soft vinyl feel without using soft vinyl. I'll be using a high quality resin and by using a resin, the dolls will be easy to drill into. They'll be easy to paint. They'll also be easy to do all your kind of modifications and all the crazy stuff that you guys do. Like, like the stuff that I was doing, Mad Scientist Doll Customs episodes, like the very beginning, the very beginning episodes one and two, and all that stuff will be a lot easier. If you guys ever drilled into vinyl, it is a nightmare. And by having the doll bodies and the doll heads made out of a nice, very high quality resin that's kind of soft, it's just, it's going to be better. Trust me. I've, I've been, whew, I've been testing out all the supplies for years now just to make sure that a customizer can customize easy with it. Now, as for mass producing the line, I'm going to be working alone to cast at first, which I couldn't tell you how that's going to go uh, until it goes. My main goal for the company is to provide living wages for those who I hire, which I don't think I'll be a huge company, but I don't know. I have to, I have to keep growing first to see where we're going to stop growing. You know what I mean? I want to hire artists to cast and package and produce produce the products in-house in my own in my own studio in the beginning but then grow later on who knows who knows who knows but my goal is to pay a living wage and I'll be casting by myself in first so I can build capital as long as well as make my doll houses for endless doll houses for more capital we want to give people living wages and I want my company to be very ethical. One of the business practices I mentioned in the last episode was the way Smart Doll produces their dolls in house. But one of the things I also want to be sure about is like the ethical business side of endless dolls. I've said it before and I'll say it even now again, there is fast fashion, but there's also fast dolls. We're talking about overproducing dolls so much and toys that's resulted in the dolls and the toys ending up in trash thrift stores and sometimes even our oceans um, my goal is for my company to be able to earn a living wage making dolls but also do it in a way that doesn't harm the environment so to I hope to accomplish this by using sensible packaging um, that's low waste um, and using recycled materials as well as using materials that are biodegradable and compostable films and plastic and that's in terms of packaging I don't believe resin itself is biodegradable or anything like that but we're, we're trying to make dolls that are a little bit more archival we're not trying to make play things in that aspect this is for the this is for the doll collectors who needs to who needs to rebody their dolls this is for the doll customizer who's making dolls to sell this is for the small business owner this is this is for you guys this is for my audience i know what y'all like i see y'all on instagram i see y'all on instagram and i've been listening I've been listening. I think toy companies spend way too much money on packaging and let's be honest. Let's be honest with ourselves. It's garbage, honey. It's garbage. You, 
you're packaging these dolls. You, I, sometimes I feel like you're paying more for packaging than you are for the actual material uh, that, that's inside the, the box. I mean, like, I saw you, look, look, I saw you, no matter what you do, you try to recycle the dolls or you try to use it as display, it's still a box. It's still a box. It's trash. It's garbage. Throw it away. Throw it away. But that's not a good thing. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so let's do low cost, low waste packaging that is going to eventually that is going to have our materials cost less. Like our dual bodies will cost less because we're spending less money on packaging. You know what I'm saying? Good. 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 I really love Obitsu's packaging in that aspect that it's very simple and clean but I would like to take away some of the inks the wasteful expensive inks that they use um, even the, the the clear packaging but I always like how the packaging was very simple and it comes in like a clear a clear film with a little a little, a little, a little a little thing on it and I, I really like that so I will be creating my packaging and being inspired by by some of these really good business practices so one of the things that I also want to talk about with is about how I am making my dolls if you are the kind of person who wants to make a doll and you know you just have a hankering like I want to get into that market I want to add some dolls of color I would like to be able to as a company to provide that service for the inspiring doll maker who just wants to make these toys who really wants to bring something to the market that hasn't been done and I would be able to provide an option versus going overseas so you don't have to go overseas you'd be able to go to endless dolls yes you'd have to go to me to get your dolls made get it casted and produced all here in the United States. Yes, it will be pricey in the sense that people are getting paid to make these things and we don't believe in slave wages. I hope you consider us in the future. Just saying. <laughs> Let's talk, go ahead and move on and talk about the some of the supplies that you need to make a prototype. Now, you can go with the printer the printing route but personally guys like I I'm I know my symmetry I went to the art school I did the anatomy classes I'm just gonna go ahead and use my skills especially coming down with this I found this channel and I'm gonna put the link below that talks about industrial design and he uses very old techniques that make beautiful prototypes and boo boo it works but if you're not and you want to go the modeling route there are some prominent 3d modelers and I'll, i'm gonna list one of my friends down below who's good at it and y'all can contact them for it but i definitely don't know if they'll actually do that but there's also lots of places for you to learn for that but i'm personally skipping that for now although my girl at kiwi baldwin at dolls kiwi probably got she probably like look at this let me let me hate on her a little bit She's like, girl, if you don't learn that real quick, wait, when you gonna learn? I am boo boo, but I'm gonna learn eventually. But right now, not, not right now, not right now. Further down the line, I think it'd be very useful to have access to 3D, 3D tools. Um, to that knowledge, anyway. I have the tools, sadly. Like that's what's so sad about it. Like the tools are just sitting around. Uh, like hopefully it's like hopefully one day I just hire someone to do that and I already know who I'm I already know I already know who I'm thinking about okay I already know who I'm thinking about to hire I met a lot of very talented people in my my art program and some of them will definitely have a spot at endless dolls when we get there now um so how am I going to cast in-house? So one of the things that I've been trying to do, basically, is gather industrial equipment that is for a small business size. Over the years, as I was going to school, every drop of dime, every Patreon dollar went towards um, seasonal frostbite and endless dolls. And in doing that, I found out some of the some of the tools that you really need to cast and I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about that for hollow doll doll heads you need a rotational casting uh, a rotational casting machine and I'll leave the link again on all the resources that I'm talking about in the 
in the link below in the description box honey and basically basically what ends up happening is you going you gonna spend a pretty good penny but let me tell you one of the things you cannot do is uh, cheap out on your supplies like there are dolls that cost hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars and they have defects like uh, the Momoko doll is notorious for having cracked ankles and cracked wrists but that doll is around 120 150 and can even go up in price once they stop making a certain type of doll and that's unacceptable in my opinion and not even my opinion it's unacceptable um so please whatever you're doing whatever you're making please put some quality into it i know that it's like i just want to make the doll and i want to see the dream as fast as possible and as cheap as possible but trust me trust me take your time um i've been building this for seven years i've been collecting pieces of equipment for seven years my rotational casting machine i had to get it custom built and it took several years to, to do that i cheaped out on it in the beginning and i ended up losing money because this the really stupid thing i bought it was called protocast on etsy um it broke immediately after the first use and uh it was just it wasn't worth it Another piece of equipment that you need if you're going to be casting in house like me, a vacuum chamber pot. You cannot get away from it. It's going to take all the bubbles out. It's going to take all the bubbles out and make your life so much better. Yeah, but that's pretty much all I got for this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed my little rant and learning a little bit more about endless dolls and you know a little bit about endless doll houses well, well if you guys want to see hear a little bit more about endless doll houses definitely leave a comment below and we'll talk about it we'll talk about it we'll talk about it in the next video in the next entry um yeah so hopefully by the end of uh, probably by the end of this week the the prototype will be finished and i'll be done I'll be done, honey. I'll be done. And I can go ahead and start casting and then start on the next prototype. <laughs> Cause like we're we're doing we're starting with the with the male the men's body first, but I still have I still have women, I still have teen boys and teen girls, and I have toddlers, and then the, of course the children. So we have we have a lot of different sizes to go through. And I have to follow the same design for each of them so the parts are interchangeable. Ugh, I know. I, like, I keep messing with this hat. I just, it fits my head, but then it also doesn't fit my head. And I wouldn't say big head problems. I actually have a peanut size head. I have so much of these locks and they, they don't fit the way it's supposed to. <laughs> Anywho, um, if you like this video, please give this video a like. If you have any questions, leave your questions down below. You guys know I read them and we upload every Wednesday now. So if you see me again, you wanna see my face again, check back in here next Wednesday. I'll go ahead and follow me on all my social media platforms at Seasonal Frostbite. And if you're interested in this project and you wanna support me financially, you wanna throw throw little bones at my way go ahead to www.patreon.com slash seasonal frostbite and make a little donation make a little donation we appreciate you we appreciate you there are a lot of goodies over there already so go ahead and go check that out and remember go out into the world and create something awesome if you don't you're gonna carry that weight see you space cowboy Mm-hmm.